Hi, welcome to Musician's Edition Saxophone Lesson, particularly alto sax. Today, we're gonna learn three notes. We're gonna learn G, A, and B. And with that, we're gonna learn how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Are you ready? Let's go. We're gonna learn real quick about just what some of the symbols mean. So, this is the treble clef. Alto saxophones play in the treble clef. It's also known as the G clef. Why? It helps us determine where the note G is. As you can see, the end of the curl is on this line. This line is where the note G is. That's also the first note we're gonna learn. So why don't we go ahead and learn that. So first things first, make sure your saxophone is put together. If you don't remember how to do that, check out our previous sax lesson. Okay, but if you do have your saxophone put together, let's go ahead and learn the note G. Okay, so first, our right hand, it, there's no fingers pressed down. So you, they, we have this part here on our saxophone. Our thumb is just going to rest here just like that. So our thumb's just gonna rest. Okay, so now this thumb on our left hand, there should be like a button on the back side of your saxophone. Our thumb is gonna just rest on that. It's not a real like key, it's just like a little button thing. So our thumb's gonna rest on that. And then we're gonna have our top three fingers down. So it's right here. You see like where the pearls are? That's kind of where we're gonna skip this little one here. We're gonna hit this one here, and then hit this key right here. That is the note G. This is what it sounds like. Why don't you go ahead and take a moment to play your note G. Great, how did you do? Remember to watch for your embouchure. If you are not sure how to do your embouchure, that was also in the previous sax lesson, so check that out there. All right, let's play it again. Let's play together on the count of four. One, two, three, four. Great job. All right, so let's introduce ourselves to what's called the whole note. Now, this is what a whole note looks like, and it's worth four beats. One, two, three, four. Okay? So, why don't we play G a couple times using the whole note? Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Okay, the next type of note I want to talk about is called a half note. Now the half note, we hold for two beats. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. In four, four time, we have four beats in each measure. A measure is a break between each section. So you see this line here? That is a measure. So that means there can only be two half notes in one measure. If you wanna learn more about the theory behind it, check out the theory lesson, it's in the description below. Okay, so now let's play the note G using a couple half notes. All right, ready? And I'm gonna once again give us the four beat count off before we play. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, let's learn our next note type, which is the quarter note. Now the quarter note is worth one beat. So we're gonna get four of them in each measure. Four quarter notes equal one whole note. So it's one, two, three, four. Ta, 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 ta. Let's play the quarter note a couple times using the note G. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. 
great job. All right, let's learn our next note now, and that is A. And to play A, our thumb is going to remain on the button, and this hand's going to remain exactly the same as well, and we're going to just take off our ring finger. So now we have index and middle finger down. The note A sounds like this. Go ahead and play the note A real quick. Okay, so now let's play the note A with our whole notes. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Now the note A is higher than the note G. You can see that it's higher on the staff, which means it's higher in pitch as well. So listen, here's G. Here's A. It has a higher pitch. Okay, let's play the note A again, but this time let's do our half notes. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. All right. And just to get a little more comfortable with both the note and the note value, let's play the note A as a quarter note. Ready? One, two, three, four. So anytime that we're going to play together, I'm always going to do a four beat count off. At least we're in this in this time signature, but we'll get to that later. So I'll always count one, two, three, four, play. All right, so now that we have the note A down, let's learn the note B next. So to play B, our right hand's going to remain exactly the same. This is our note A. We're gonna just take off the middle finger. So now it's just the index finger. Thumb remains on the button. Okay, so this is what B sounds like. Go ahead and play your note B. Great job. Now B is higher than A. Once again, it's higher up on the staff and it's higher in pitch. So here's A. Here's B. You hear how it's higher and you can see that it's higher. Okay, let's get used to the note B real quick. So let's play B using the whole notes. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Now let's play B using the half note. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Now to kind of put it, break it up like the way I was, we're going to ta it. Don't use your voice, but in your mouthpiece and using your tongue, ta, 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 ta. So without using the voice, it's ta, 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 ta. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's how it breaks up the notes. Instead of it just sounding like a whole note, it now sounds like two different notes, but on the same note. Okay, let's play the note B using the quarter note. And so this one's ta, 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 ta. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Okay, so now that we know our three notes, and we know what the quarter notes are. Let's learn how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. So our first note is B. So why don't we just play that? Ready? One, two, three, four. And then our next note is A. 
So now let's play B and A. Ready? One, two, three, four. And then the next note is G. So let's play B, A, G. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Now it's back to A. So let's play those notes all together. Ready? One, two, three, four. And then the next note is B, and we're going to play B a couple times. So let's go ahead and play all that together. Ready? One, two, three, four. And then it's going to be A a couple times. So let's play all that together now. Ready? One, two, three, four. Then back to B. So let's play all that together now. Ready? One, two, three, four. Then it's going to act like it basically repeats itself. So B, A, G. And then the same thing going back up. Try to play the whole thing together. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job, how did you feel? I'm a big fan of doing things in three, so I wanna make sure we get it. So let's play it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. job. Let's play it one more time so we really have it. So remember, don't practice it until you get it right. Practice it until you can't get it wrong. So let's play it again to make sure we have it down solid. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> job. If you want to practice more, which I totally recommend, why don't you check out our practice with me's. We have books and we practice everything exercise by exercise. And it's a good way to get ahead of our actual saxophone lessons. And once in a while it's ahead of our theory lessons, but I don't think we will for saxophone since we just started this this year. But anyway, you should still check out the practice with me's to make sure that you keep up with it, and you can learn ahead, you can get comfortable reading the notes and the note values. So I would check that out. I'll put it at the end card. All right, thanks for joining me and until next time.